Hello everyone, my name is Adi Emiolu Adim Nadi Divra, the creator of Compass 7.0. This video is titled Map Reduction and Enlargement. And as I mentioned in the previous video on Map Skill, this topic is going to take us into practical geography proper. So stay tuned. So firstly, let's define the concepts. Map enlargements. This is the process of increasing the size of the map. This increase leads to a corresponding decrease in the scale of the map. Simply, increasing the size of the map leads to a decrease in its scale. Now let's look at this illustration. Increasing the map size leads to a decrease in its scale. For now, just ignore the numbers, we're going to focus on that later. But as we can see, the map was 1 ratio 100,000, but as we increase the size of the map, the scale reduced to 1 ratio 50,000. Map reduction. This is the process of decreasing the size of the map. This decrease leads to a corresponding increase in the scale of the map. Simply, decreasing the size of the map leads to an increase in its scale. And let's look at a similar illustration. Reducing the size of the map leads to an increase in its scale. The procedure for map reduction and enlargement is the same up to points. So firstly, we need to measure the length and width of the original map and write it down. On measuring, we have 30 by 30.2. Mind you, these measurements are from an actual map. Next, we're going to make a grid on the map. Simply, we're going to divide our map into little boxes. Ten boxes, both horizontally and vertically, should be ideal for any map. But anything that works for you. But you need to remember not to make too few boxes and not too many either. This is because if the boxes are too few, you won't be able to accurately draw the required features asked of you. And if they are too many, it will just be a waste of time, which you don't have. Now, before we move on to the next step of enlarging and reducing the map, let's talk about the scale. Since I haven't mentioned it in a while, some people might start to think it's not relevant, but it is. Questions relating to map reduction and enlargement can be asked, as you can see on the screen. So, from observing previous maps, there are basically two ways in which map reduction and enlargement scale questions can be asked. The first one, you are either given a new scale and asked to find the factor by which it is to be reduced or enlarged. And with that, I have a formula to make things easy for you. You can find this formula in your textbooks. And the formula goes as thus, old scale over new scale. But now the way to differentiate it from map reduction and enlargement is the answer you get. Always remember this, for reduction, you get a fraction. For enlargement, you get a whole number. So when dividing the old scale by the new scale, the answer you get is what determines whether it's going to be reduction or enlargement if the question doesn't tell you directly. So as not to make a mistake with the numerator or denominator, remember the word on. Old over new, O, N. So now let's say questions one and three. Since we already have the old scale given to us as one ratio 50,000, So now remembering the formula O over N, the old scale 50,000 divided by the new scale 150,000 gives us one over three. And the old scale 50,000 divided by the new scale 25,000 gives us two. On dividing, we have one over three as a fraction indicating reduction and two indicating that the map is to be enlarged by a factor of two. As you can see when dividing, we ignore the number one in the scale. So note that if you add the number one and solve it as a division of two fractions, you're going to get a re reciprocal of the two answers, which is very wrong. So if you do one ratio 50,000 over one over 150,000, you're going to get three, which is not what the question is asking you for. When dividing, just ignore the one and focus only on the numbers. So in the first case, we were given the scale and asked to find the factor by which the map is to be reduced or enlarged. But in case two, we are given the factor and we have to find the new scale, which is going to help us reduce or enlarge our map. So the formula goes as thus, old scale times the factor is equal to the new scale. And the RF means representative fraction. But if you do know representative fraction means, make sure to watch the previous video on map scale. I'll put the link in the description box below. Looking at the instances again, let's solve question two. So we're given the factor 1 over 3. Multiplying the original scale by the factor, we have 1 over 150,000, which is the same thing as saying 1 ratio 150,000, reduced to a third of its original size. 
In case anyone is confused, because the question said reduce to a third of its size, but our answer 150,000 is bigger than 50,000. Firstly, don't forget that we are looking at the entire fraction as a whole, and 1 over 150,000 is actually smaller than 1 over 50,000. You can confirm with your calculator. But most importantly, recall that reducing the map does what to the scale, it increases the scale. So since we have to reduce the map to a third of its original size, our scale is going to increase by that factor of 3, even though the map is actually going to be smaller when drawn. Now let's take one more instance in relation to case 2. Enlarge the original map 2 times to its original size. So now the factor is 2. Multiplying the old scale by this factor of 2, we have 1 over 25,000, which is the same as 1 ratio 25,000. The moment you understand the concept very well, you don't need to waste time calculating unless you just want to cross-check. Because usually in exam, you'll be given small numbers, factors of 2, 3, half, and 1 over 3. The questions will almost always ask you to reduce your map because if you are given a map that's 30 by 30 and you're asked to increase it by a factor of 2, that means you're going to get, what, 60 by 60 centimeters. Uh, they wouldn't want to stress you and themselves by providing you with such a huge paper. So that's why you're never going to see a question like that. But notice that for question 3, even though the new scale is 1 ratio 25,000, that means that the map is supposed to be enlarged by a factor of 2. But take note that they didn't ask for the enlargement of the whole map. They only ask for the enlargement of a given section, A, B, C, D. So this is the only case where you are going to see enlargements in your map, in your practical geography questions. So continue with the procedure for map reduction and enlargements. After we draw the specifications of our new map according to what the question asks, remembering the previous readings we got, 30 by 30 centimeters and 1 ratio 50. So if we ask to reduce it to a third of its size, as previously done before, we are going to get a scale of 1 ratio 150,000. So after reducing the scale, don't forget that we have to reduce the map itself. So we are going to divide 30 by 3 or multiply 30 by 1 over 3. At the end of the day, we are still going to get the same answer, 10 centimeters. So now I'm very sure we understand the principle of map reduction and enlargement. Even if we ask to increase this current map by a factor of 2, I'm sure that wouldn't be a problem. It would look something like this. With the scale 1 ratio 25,000. So we increase the previous map we had 30 by 30 by 2. So now we know how to reduce and enlarge a map. What next? Are we just going to reduce the whole map and copy everything exactly as it is onto the new map? Of course not. You're only going to be asked to indicate some features on the map in your new diagram. So let's take an example from NECO 2021. Study carefully the map extracts BGSE on a scale of 1 ratio of 50,000 and answer the questions that follow. Draw an outline of the original map to a scale of 1 ratio of 100,000. On your outline, insert the following. The secondary road from point X to Y, Dawaki settlement, river Watari and its direction of flow using arrows and B, calculate the actual distance of the main road from point X to Y. Now, firstly, we need to measure the length and width of the map. On measuring, we have 30.2 centimeters by 30 centimeters. Now, the next thing to do is to identify whether it's going to be reduction or enlargements. But I'm sure some people can already see what it's going to be. So we have our old scale as 1 ratio 50,000 and the new scale as 1 ratio 100,000. So is this scale increasing or decreasing? The scale is increasing. And if the scale is increasing, what's going to happen to the map? Remember the inverse relationship. The map is going to reduce. So now that we can tell that our scale is going to increase and our map is going to reduce, now we need to know by what factor. And that's where the formula comes in. O over N, old scale over new scale. By doing the division, we have 50,000 over 100,000 is going to give us 1 over 2. And a fraction means what? Reduction. So now that we've gotten the factor and we know what the scale and everything is going to be, now let's actually do it on the map. So the length and breadth 30.2 centimeters by 30 centimeters. And so our new length and breadth are going to be 15.1 .1 centimeters by 15 centimeters. So now we can draw our outline for the map. As you can see, this is a map that this is the outline that I've drawn 15.1 centimeters by 15 centimeters. Now we can draw our grid. I did 10 boxes both horizontally and vertically. And since the map is basically 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters, each box is going to be 3 centimeters by 3 centimeters.
you can see that on measuring I got 30 by 30.2 centimeters. And when solving it, I didn't approximate it to 30. You solve it the way you measured it out from your graph. Don't approximate, please. So now, since I've done my grid on my big map, I'm going to also make a grid on the smaller map that I created. Here, each small box, since I did 10 boxes horizontally and vertically, 3.3 centimeters by 3 centimeters, on the smaller map, each box is going to be 1.5 centimeters by 1.5 centimeters, basically. And it's advisable that after drawing your grid, you should put numbers beside it, both vertically and horizontally, on both the actual map and the one you've drawn. This is going to make it easier to identify the given features that you're asked to replicate on your new map. So by numbering the boxes, it's going to make it easy to trace out structures. You can pick it from row and column. Now the first structure we were asked to draw on the new map was road XY. So now let's zoom in and look for that. Zooming in, we can see that this is X, this is Y. So this is root X, Y. Now that we've found it, let's draw it on the new map. So we can see that root X, Y extends from row 6, column 2, to row 6, column 7. So the numbers make it easy to identify it. And since we've also numbered it on our new map, we can just trace it out following the same numbers. As you can see, I did the same thing on this map. I numbered it here, row six, column two, row six, column seven, row x, y, simple. So now the next thing we were asked to identify was the settlements, Dawaki settlements. So now let's zoom in and look for that. Okay, and here we've seen the Waki settlements close to the top of the map. And using our numbers on the grid, the Waki settlement is in row 2, column 7. Let's highlight that to make it more visible. Okay, so we've highlighted that to make it more visible. Row 2, column 7. So now let's replicate this on our map. The Waki settlements, they have only built it. Route 2, column 7. Now, the last thing we are asked to identify was the river Watari and also to show its flow. So now, this is River Watari, the longest river on the map. Let me zoom in a bit to show you the name here okay. River Watari. Now we can see that this river basically extends throughout the whole course of the map. So it's going to be a bit tricky to trace it out, but this is where the boxes come in. The boxes are going to make it easy to trace out the extent of the river on our map, on our new map. So now we're we'll to show the direction of flow of the river. And looking at the course of the river, we can see that it goes from up to down. So this is basically the direction in which river is flowing, but most of the time it's not always this simple. I'll likely discuss this in a video on drainage later. But for now, it's as we see it, the river is flowing from up down. So now let's add the arrows on the map. Good. So we have everything, road X, Y, Dawaki settlements and river Watari. And one important thing that makes a map a map is its key. So don't forget the key. The key will tell the examiner what you drew on the map. So I drew a key for the road, secondary road. Dawaki is a settlement, so I use the shape to represent it, and the blue in the river. So please don't forget, when you are drawing your own map, use pencil, not viral. The only reason I used blue here, I used colored pens, was to make explaining easier and for aesthetic purposes when you exam, please use pencil. Now let's also solve 1B. And this is going to test our knowledge on map skill, the application questions that we did. Now remember that the scale of the map we were given is 1 to 50,000, converting that to statement scale. We have 1 centimeter to half kilometer, which is also the same thing as 2 centimeters to 1 kilometer. So now calculating the actual distance of road XY, measuring it on the map with the ruler, we have the distance as 
15 centimeters. So the distance on the map is 15 centimeters. But mind you, don't just stop there and give this as your final answer because they act for the actual distance. Remember that the map is representing an actual settlement on the ground. So this 15 centimeters is what you measured on the map. But this 15 centimeters also translates to a measurement of the actual ground distance. So we need our skill to get that. So since our scale 2 centimeters is 1 kilometer, 15 centimeters will be equals to what? So we divide 15 centimeters by 2, and that gives us 7.5 kilometers. So the actual ground distance is 7.5 kilometers. But if you don't really, or if you don't quite get these calculations, make sure to watch the video map scale. The link is in the description box below. And with that, we come to the end of the video on map reduction and enlargement. Since work is around the corner, I want to start a sort of exam series where I'm going to be solving questions from work, NECO, GCE on objective and practical geography. Thank you for sticking with me till the end.